guys, welcome back. It's Mrs. Peterson, that lady who teaches art, and today we're going to talk about how to make your layered landscape. Um, so your first choice you're going to get to make is to select a reference image, and this is the one I chose. You can look um, through the ones I have, and it doesn't have to be exactly like what you see in the picture, um, but it's just for reference so we can kind of get an idea of what we're doing. So that's my first choice. I'm going to choose this reference photo. And then my second choice I get to make is with my paper. I can decide if I want it to go the long way, which we actually call landscape, or the tall way. Um, this way um, would be pretty normal for a landscape. Usually we think about doing it this way, but for the layered landscape, I think I want to actually do it the portrait way, the other way, because then it will be easier to space out my layers. So the first layer, okay, so I made those two choices. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my pencil to lightly, that's a key word, guys, lightly sketch my layers. So the first thing I'm going to do back here is I have some little hills. Oh, and I need to go a little darker so you can see what I'm doing. Zoom in a little. And... There's my first layer. So above this is gonna be my white, and I won't need to paint that at all. And then this is gonna be my lightest tint. So it's gonna have the most white and just a little tiny bit of my color that I select. Um, then my next row on here is a row of like buildings. So I'm gonna sketch those on next. And then this building has like a point on it, but I think I'm going to add something different. I'm going to make, it kind of reminds me just a little tiny bit of a church. So I'm actually going to make this into more of like a steeple, like what we saw um, when we studied um, Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night. There was a steeple in his. So there's that row. And then my next row has more hills and mountains. This little city must be tucked. And some mountains. And then my last layer on my reference image is just really light. Little lines up and down. Pretty. Not very sharp at all. Okay, so like we talked about, the first layer is going to stay white. I don't need to paint anything there. The next layer, I'm going to take um, white and the mix of my color. Remember, this is monochromatic. So that means I'm going to be using one color the whole time. You do not have to use the same color as your reference image. This one had greens and some um, darker shades of that. I'm going to use blue. That's just what I happen to have right here. So I'm going to start, we always start with painting with our lighter color. So I'm going to start by taking a little bit of my white and giving a new spot over here. I want to keep this white completely clean and I'm going to start over here with my white and I'm probably going to take two dabs of my white. Now this brush is going to be for my white and this brush is going to be for my blue. You should have two or your color that you're using. I'm going to take a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of that color and dab it right in there. And now I'm going to start mixing. And I have a light blue. I want to mix it all up. Okay, now it's all in my paintbrush, which is great, because now I want it on my paper. I'm going to set my paint aside. I'm going to set this other paintbrush that has a white just across my plate so it doesn't fall. And then I'm just going to start painting on here. It's okay if you get a little bit on the table. I'm going to carefully follow my line. And you might want to turn your paintbrush over once you start getting kind of bumpy like that. That means your paintbrush isn't totally loaded. And 
And it's okay if you don't stay right on your line if you need to adjust it a little bit. Okay, now this bottom part is going to be trickier because I have to be very careful about going into my details. It's okay if I get on the table. We'll clean it up at the end. And if I need to use just the corner of my brush for some details, that's fine. This is going to be the trickiest layer because it has the most details. Now that building got pretty skinny, so I'm going to come back and try to give it a little more width. This curve. And I'm kind of painting two outlines because then when I go back across the middle, it'll be... No big deal. A little more paint from my palette, aka my plate. I'm going to remember that that cross is there. I'll paint it on with the next color. Okay, then I can come back and get those details with my brush. And just use the side of my brush or the corner of my brush. But we want it to be solid. That whole area. We don't want any white showing through because each area is going to be a darker shade. And then we're going to get to our color and then we're going to go to our tints, the ones that we mix with black. Okay, get the edge there. Go back and see if there's any white spots like that one right there. This one right here. And that is our first painted layer. Okay, then we're ready to make our second layer. Now this one is also going to have white and a little bit of blue, but this time I'm only gonna take one dab of white and then I'm gonna go back with this brush and I'm gonna take one dab of blue and put those together. I'm gonna leave my white brush. Actually, this time I think I'm gonna I'm done with my white after this, so I'm going to use my white brush to mix these two because this will be the last time this brush gets used today. And you probably don't, mine is drier over there because I left and came back, but now you don't want to mix right on top of yours, but I'm just showing you what I'm doing here. So we're going to mix these two colors and we want to make sure it's darker than my last one. And I think that it is. So now... We're going to do the same thing again. I'm going to set my other brush down on my paper plate. I'm going to paint my edge as carefully as I can. I can twist my brush over when I feel like I'm running out of paint. And it's okay if it gets off of my painting just a little bit. We'll clean up our tables later. You're okay, you can come in. Um, and then I'm going to go back and get that top edge. Remember, this is going to be the hardest edge to do because I have to be really detailed on this layer. I also don't want to leave any white, so we'd rather paint over our last layer just a little bit. I go really carefully on this one, turn my brush way to the side to get my building nice and skinny. Okay, and this building was kind of a curved building. I'm going to load up my brush with a little more paint right on the edge. Now you can definitely tell that those two colors I just mixed are way different. As paint dries, it dries a little darker. So at first I was a little concerned that they were close to each other, but I think it's going to be just fine. And then this is where I had my steeple. So 
I want to add that detail back, I'm going to use the very corner of my brush. I'm going to flip over because I used a lot of paint on that side. Make this tall and skinny there. And then I'm going to add that cross right on top if I still want that detail. And then come across. Thank you. Mr. Conley just took our garbage out of the art room. Okay, the rest of the layers are going to be so much easier to paint than this one because there's so much less detail. But the detail makes it pretty fun, so I don't want to rush. I want to make sure I get all those details. And then again, feel free to paint right off onto the table. We'll clean that up with baby wipes later. And just go back and make sure you don't have any white spots showing. Just right there. And if anything doesn't look square, you can go back and make it look really square right now. Okay, that one is done. Okay, my next.